Terrera, and uh, I'm currently your city attorney, have been so for nine and a half years, and am running for mayor. And uh, I've been doing so since it seems like forever, but on August 26th, it'll be a year since I announced my candidacy, and now we have a bigger field. I'm glad to see we have Jeff Adachi here. He was smart. He waited till the last minute here, so he didn't have to go through as many months of this as we did. <laughs> but uh, all of us are going to set out our vision for what uh, we think is at stake uh, in this mayor's race. And I can't thank all of you enough for giving all of us the opportunity to come and have a conversation with all of you about what is at stake in this mayor's race. And the fact that you are here <coughs> tells me that you know how important it is. Uh, I happen to believe, and I've been saying all across the campaign trail, that I think that this is a seminal election for mayor in San Francisco. I think it's the most important mayor's race we've had in 20 years, and the most important mayor's race that we're going to have for the next 20. And there's a real simple reason for that. It's because of the opportunities and challenges that San Francisco uh, finds at its feet. You know, our population has gone from 750,000 to 805,000 people. You've heard discussions about companies that want to move here. You see empty nesters and young people wanting to uh, uh, come and seek their fame and fortune in San Francisco. But we all know that it is a time of tremendous challenge. You look at what's going on internationally, domestically, politically, economically. We know that there are tr uh, tremendous challenges that are out there, especially for local governments and especially for big cities. Because as you see a reurbanization of America, you understand that people want to be back in cities, but the challenges that we face are particularly acute for those that live in big city America. I mean, let's just look at what's happening across this country. <clears throat> In Washington, you had a bunch of people that were elected to Congress uh, promising they were going to put people back to work. And they haven't put people back to work. Instead, they're talking about putting, pitting seniors against young people, uh, uh, business against labor, gay against straight. Instead of focusing on bringing communities together, they've been focusing on the issues that have divided us for all too long. And that has been replicated in state capitals across the country, from New Jersey, Indiana, even here in California. On the, on the author of fiscal responsibility, which is an important thing, I recognize, people have forgotten about government's fundamental purpose, and that is to take care of our most vulnerable and to create opportunity for all. And I don't see a lot of that going on right now, even in, in state capitals, even here in California. Instead of having a realistic discussion about what role government should play in our lives, we can't even have a realistic discussion on the structural reforms that we have to make to make sure that California can continue to be the golden state for generations 50, 75 years from now. And I know one thing. I know that as the federal and state government shifts more and more responsibilities off its balance sheet, I know that those responsibilities are not going away. They're just going to fall to those of us in local government and at the local level to deal with the problems. So it's going to be up to those of us in local government to ha help create economic opportunity and to make sure that we can have a government that uh, meets pe people's basic needs each and every day, from providing quality transit to making sure that we have green parks, to make sure that we have streets that are functional, to make sure that we are backfilling uh, public health funding that is being uh, discounted from the federal and state government. Let's just look at Ryan White AIDS care funding the, that has been, uh, we've had seen draconian cuts in. What does it mean for public health? You look at housing. It is going to fall to those of us at the local level to backfill what is now being neglected from at the federal and state level and to demonstrate that we can have a government that works to improve people's lives each and every day. And that is why I am running for mayor, because I know that we can do better. I know that we can do better because, because I've lived it for nine and a half years as your city attorney on everything from providing access to quality health care for 50,000 San Franciscans that didn't have it, on fighting on issues of national significance like marriage equality and choice to the most local, quality health care, shutting down the Moran power plant, suing payday lenders who are taking care of, uh, taking advantage of those that are living paycheck to paycheck by charging yeah. usurious interest rates, by suing the state of California to outlaw gender rating, which allowed health insurers to charge women 39% more for health insurance as opposed to their male counterparts simply because they're women. What I've done for nine and a half years is use the power of the law to make a difference in people's lives each and every day. 
And that's what I want to bring to the mayor's office. Because I firmly believe that local government, if done well and working collaboratively, can make a difference in people's lives each and every day, address their most basic needs, and help create economic opportunity for everybody across all levels of the socioeconomic spectrum here in the city and county of San Francisco. So I'm glad I had the opportunity to talk to you, and I look forward to having your support. Thanks very much. Thank you. Next on the list, we have...